Hey y'all, welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Colton, here with Brandon. We had three events in the BCS calendar this last weekend, as well as some new releases announced for English, so let's get right into it. Starting with Sydney on October 22nd, 56 players, a lot of Alice and a lot of Hollow Live, Brandon. Yeah, yeah it was. Um... A lot of things we expected to see, especially coming out of Australia. A lot of Alice Kirito and a lot of Alice Silica. No Slime, which I think is interesting because Slime has been probably the most present set in the new meta in terms of getting consistent tops. So to see No Slime at an event where you know a lot of really good players were playing is interesting. But yeah, Alice Kirito, Alice Silica, 1-2. Ozki Gura makes its triumphant return to top 8. Uh, with a finisher in third and also in the five through eight. Alice Kirtar goes fourth. Grisaya gets a top. Sure. Why not? Nothing super special about this Grisaya list. It's just the Grisaya list. This is one of those things where, like, if you're on Grisaya and you're a good player and you get your matchups, you can have some success. Good job. Like, getting Grisaya to top eight, I think, is a pretty solid achievement. Um, but I don't think this changes the way we talk about Grisaya in the context of the meta. Yep. The other interesting deck here is the Kanata Suisse that finished top eight. Basically, we're at the point now where you can just like throw two combos together in Hollow Live and you have a deck that technically works. Like, almost no level one game is literally just playing four copies of the Ina Resonator as its level one game. And then just slamming Kanata on the board at two. And then it uses Suisse as, you know, the board disruption and the burn. Like, at this point, it's just like, sure, why not? Just, like, play whatever, man. It's, <laughs> that's Hollow Live for you. I don't know if a ban would matter in Hollow Live just because you can immediately pivot to so many other good combos. This is a new combination, though. Which, I mean, I'm always excited to see a new combination of combos in Hollow Live. So, this is kind of fun. I think it's really more of a responsive one, too. Like, realistically, because Suisse can also come in early, it makes it so that way you have to all of a sudden, both Kanata and Suisse are both, like, almost, like, competing in regards to who's going to be on that turn when. So it's very much a timing question of who's going to be and doing what when. You really want Kanata down to get another turn of Suisse, so you kind of have a little bit of both of those worlds. Uh, it also could depend on the matchup too, right? So being able to pivot when you need to for that matchup yeah. makes a lot of sense too. And and that's just it, right? I don't know if there's a set that's more able to prepare both before the deck is built and after the game has started for a matchup than Hollow Live. Hollow Live just has a million profiles and a bunch of combos, all of which are playable. And you can just go look at, okay, who what's going to be there, right? Am I going to play into a lot of Slime and Alice? Am I going to play into... You know, stuff that's maybe a little more low to the ground, maybe a little more damage intensive. Whatever you think you're going to play into, Hollow Live has a reasonable answer. Like, this is just another good pile of Hollow Live cards. I don't think there's a bad pile of Hollow Live cards that you can really have anymore. It's just so many good profiles all in one deck, and it has a game plan. And if it, you know, when it sees a matchup, it pivots to a certain way to play. And especially if you're preparing for a meta a certain way and if your preparation for that meta was good, a well-tuned Hollow Live list can absolutely carry you through, and that's what happened here. Moving on to the Netherlands. A lot more of the same, except a pair of Slimes and a pair of Quints in top eight. Alice and Silica won. The Eight Pants Slime list came in second. A pair of ozki based Hollow Live lists, one with the Gura top end, one with the Polka top end, in third and fourth. And this is... It almost looks like we're looking at the next evolution of Hollow Live with this Polka type of list, where it's got the Luna. We've talked about this, so I don't want to get into too much on it right now. But it's the 1-1 Polka combo on standby, and you're just using those standby triggers once you get to level 2 to get Lunas on the board. This runs four copies of Luna. It runs three copies of the Power Pump Miko in the back row. That's also a Brainstormer. And you're just throwing standby at the board getting big bodies and denying some damage. And because you're in standby, you're running an abundance of soul triggers, and that's how you, you know, push this extra damage. You're getting consistent plussing because you have the Ozki combo, as well as the Polka that bounces back to your hand while also being an Imagi. It runs four copies of the Double Drop Searcher Mio 
this deck is all about just consistency, getting bored, denying some damage with Luna, and honestly, it's the closest thing we have to a stall deck in this meta right now. Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's definitely trying to elongate that game in a way that benefits it. So, yeah, no, absolutely it is. Rest of top eight, Paraquints, one choice, one salvage, another eight pant slime, and a Mother's Rosario last shot sword art deck. It's like a retro sword art deck, but it's been updated with a bunch of like the new good pieces. I'm a fan of this. I think this is pretty fun. Like you all of a sudden put a bunch of new tools in an old deck and it works really well. It also does run one copy of the Mother's Rosario top end. So you have the option to go in with that. I like that this deck leaves that option available to you. And then finally, British Columbia. 117 players, so the biggest regional from the weekend. The winner was the Chloe Marine deck, going back to our theme of you can just play any two combos you want in Hollow Live and you'll get a good deck out of it. This deck is interesting because it plays four copies, obviously, of the Chloe Level 1. It also plays four copies of the Resonator La Plus, and also four copies of the Marine. So it looks like the game plan here is to go Chloe into Marine, but it also has all of the fun Resonate stuff that you want the La Plus for. It's got the Resonator, the 2-1, the Iroha that gets big. It's got the Koyori that gives power and denies backups. It's got the Louie in the back row where you resonate and it turns it into a pay one, top check, add one. So just like really consistent plussing on a stick. It's basically just the Hollow X deck, but it throws the Marine top end in and says this is a little bit better than the Laplace and we have the room for it, so we're going to do it. Again, Hollow Live, you have so many options. And so many cards just work together because they're just good profiles that you can just stick combos onto combos and it will work. And not to say that these decks aren't well thought out or considered. Obviously they are. And we were talking about this beforehand. This is also something of a meta call, right? Because the Laplace does so many things for you with the Resonator and it gives you the opportunity to actually clear board with the 2-1 the Iroha. So like having that Resonate package available to you is really nice. You also get the consistency of playing the Hollow X event that searches for climaxes. This deck just makes sense. So you can continue to slam climaxes every turn, so that way you can be able to continually be able to clear board to be able to like benefit off of clearing board too, kind of thing. So it's like, yeah. And you're all and it only needs the one specific card in hand to make that all happen. Yeah. In second was another Oski Polka. Third place was Avatar 8 standby with the Azula top end and the Sokka extra attack enabler. Alice Kirito came in fourth. We finally get an Overlord in top eight this weekend. There was only one. Eight Pants Slime, Alice Kirito Sword Art, and Salvage Choice AOT makes its first appearance. Salvage Choice AOT kind of in the same boat as Grisaya, just like generically good cards, but underpowered for this format. Like, doesn't really change the way that we look at the stack in terms of its meta relevance. I would say it's an accomplishment to get AOT into top eight more than anything else. Overlord finally does something. The more of these weekends that pass, the more convinced I become the Overlord's just not it. This is the third Overlord deck that we've seen come through. It's showing less representation than Azkigura at the moment, which should also say something too. Representation in top eight. It's the third one all season when, you know, you look at any of these other regionals, you see three Hollow Lives, you see three Sword Arts, you see three Quints, you see three Slimes. Like, mm -hmm. Overlord is definitely trailing that pack of four, for sure. All right, so looking ahead to what comes next, we had a product stream this last weekend. Stuff got announced. We're going to get Dinkeki Bunko. Which is a shock, honestly. I was surprised by this one. What's in this set? I don't even know what this, like, IP includes. I know it's got some Railgun stuff, which you're excited about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Railgun on 100%. There are, but there are 51 titles in Dinkeki Bunko. That's so many titles. So with that, there's actually quite a few sets that actually get support through Dinkeki Bunko coming in. SAO gets some more support. Because it because it definitely needed that. Um, a Cell World gets some more support. GGO gets more support. Hey, there we go. That's fun. Bunny Girl gets support. Those are the big ones. More relevant to our conversation, does any of this matter? It's fun. Okay. But none of these cards are going to make any of these pre-exist. This isn't a situation where it's like, oh, this card is going to make everything different for this, for this set, or it's going to suddenly make Excel World relevant. Nothing like that. 
so far of things that have been coming through uh, and titles is there still relatively new stuff even for jp side so like we are still significantly far ways away from these coming in sorry because we're not actually planning on seeing these until like any of these until like april at the earliest yeah we don't have as much playthrough with some of these cards or like the decks haven't been fully finalized yet but there's a lot of building with some of these ones but right now nothing is like earth shattering hey this is the new tier zero card deck coming through and that's been kind of interesting just in the last several months it's kind of been this way when hollow life 2 was announced the new quint stuff the new slime stuff like we anticipated like yeah this is going to be good this is going to be meta relevant we have heard None of that kind of hype coming from JP about any of this stuff that just got announced. Yeah, well, and I think there's also a really big part of that too, right? Like uh, the decks you mentioned were definitely cards that were leaning towards that like next level of power creep. Whereas I think some of these decks are helping to fill in that power creep kind of thing. Like these are going to be probably solid, consistent sets that are going to be inside of that power creep threshold. So they're going to be ahead of some of the decks that went on before it, but it's going to also be kind of contained inside that same kind of threshold. Also worth noting, two different trial decks for this set. The only other unique title announced is Bochi the Rock. We expected this one. That will be coming to English as well. Bang Dream My Go is just a trial deck, trial deck plus specifically. Bang Dream Girls Band Party Countdown Collection is also happening. That's a premium booster. I think that's mostly reprints. So I don't know if either of these really affect Bang Dream, but Bang Dream does get a little bit more support, which it always will because it's Bang Dream. Saikano gets its movie set. So Saikano gets a shot in the arm. And Ruby, one of the sets that probably needed support more than any other, is going to get a premium booster. And because Ruby is an English exclusive... There is the possibility, like the rest of these sets, we know what the cards are, so we know that there's nothing you know, earth shattering in any of these. Ruby premium, no idea. This could actually make Ruby meta relevant. Well, and we saw that with Seven Deadly Sins, right? Yeah, exactly. We did see that happen with Seven Deadly Sins. This is the second time they've announced a sequel to an English original. And, you know, honestly, it would be cool to see Ruby good. Um, one, because it's an English original, we just don't see very many good English originals. But two, it would just help diversify the meta a little bit. So I'm all for stuff that's good and not overpowered. Ruby has the potential to be in that category, depending on what R&D came up with. So these will all be happening probably in the April to August window. No dates announced, nor is the release order announced. So we don't know when these will be coming out, but pretty fair to say spring-summer is when we will be seeing these. No Oshi no Ko, despite... The valiant dances of some. I still expect that will happen at some point. It just isn't happening in the next six months. And that's it. Thank you so much. We'll be back on Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And have a good one. We'll see you then.